Hello again. This week, Warwick ICAST is in Toronto, Canada, for the first overseas meeting of the Warwick Commission. The Commission is due to report in December on the future of the world trade system. It's chaired by the former Canadian Trade and Foreign Affairs Minister, the Honourable Pierre Pettigrew. We started really in January. We had our first uh, session as, uh, with the commissioners in, uh, at the university in, in February. We then had our questionnaire sent uh, to a very large number of both practitioners and our trade experts in our universities or institutions. We've had feedbacks from these experts and practitioners of international trade. We've analyzed these and our drafters have already produced this sort of roughed first draft, which really was the object of our work here in Toronto. Now, this isn't just an academic commission. Several of the commissioners have practical experience that they can draw on. Pierre Sauvé, just remind me of the role that you played during the NAFTA negotiations. I, uh, I served as Canada's negotiator in the area of trade, trade and services, so banking, telecommunications, transportation, the whole service sector. It's a bit of a paradox that the WTO seems in some ways to be a victim of its success. There is a queue outside to come in. There is a degree of participation uh, in negotiations that is unique in many respects that makes negotiations more complex because there are more voices around the table. Many more countries are vocal and vocally defending their interests in a manner that we didn't see before. That changes the equation uh, in negotiations in a way that is undoubtedly more complex, makes uh, the quest for consensus more difficult, but at the same time makes the process more legitimate, more democratic in a way. The world is, is, is a dramatically different place than what it was a decade or so uh, ago. And, and this is very exciting, and it gives a lot of opportunities. I mean, they think that, for example, the opening of the Chinese market uh, is having a, a huge beneficial impact uh, on the world economy overall. But at the same time, when you have this degree of turbulence and we have a new players and a huge new player like China in particular, this invariably results in a good degree of turbulence, degree of tension, a degree of, of rivalry between uh, old players, new players, uh, and so on. And therefore, it's in that context that the institutions that exist, which can serve to provide uh, the foundations uh, to the world economy, that can provide the framework, that can provide above all the rule of law, so that uh, you know, in case we go through uh, a difficult period, which at some stage or another we're bound to, uh, that we're going to find that uh, we're not lacking in both the letter and spirit of a proper institutional framework with respect for the rule of law. To be perfectly candid, it, I started off a little bit skeptical of commissions and these sort of exercises. Um, I've been enormously impressed at both the range of expertise and the quality of the discussion. Um, the commission uh, includes folks from all around the world, from developed countries, developing countries, from different disciplines, from practice, from the academy, from government. Um, and so there are a number of very uh, rich and diverse perspectives uh, and for the most part, we've been able to try to find a, a middle way that I think combines um, really the best of insights from various disciplines and experiences. As the only American and the only lawyer on the commission, have the other commissioners been putting you on the spot? You know, as you might expect, law is probably not the most uh, popular discipline in the room. Um, and to be sure, uh, the role of America in the trading system um, is a very difficult role. Um, I'm not here as a representative of the government at all, um, but uh, the commissioners have really struggled with um, how do you keep America as the largest power, as the superpower engaged, but not have it be as an institution that simply serves one state's interests, but really serves the collective interests. The commission is a very important initiative. It's evolving, you know, the global trade talks are stalled, uh, there are concerns about the future of the multilateral trading system because of this uh, uh, deadlock at the WTO. And the Commission uh, is a very important initiative because uh, it seeks to uh, establish what the underlying programs you know, that confront the global trade system are and uh, to propose ways in which uh, it could be, um, they could be resolved. Now, you have specialist knowledge of so-called LDCs, the least developed countries. Do you think they get a raw deal out of the world trade system? 
Yes, um, there is a concern that, um, you know, when the Uruguay round of trade negotiations was completed and a deal was, uh, was made, you know, the, um, the concessions that developed countries agreed to make, you know, um, for, for the LDCs were never uh, followed up on. The key issue that confronts the LDCs is integration into the global trade system. A lot of them um, are marginalized uh, from global trade. They have serious internal problems which make it difficult for them you know, to engage meaningfully in international markets. And this is where the challenge of the WTO is, you know, to integrate those countries into the global system. I think we have made uh, tremendous, and I think um, on my behalf, unexpected strides in really identifying what we think are the crunch issues for the multilateral trading system. And I think, um, much to my delight, that we've actually managed to come up with some possible both technical and political solutions, or at least means of addressing some of these issues. Are you an optimist or a pessimist about the future of the world trading system? As a result of doing the, the kind of analytical work that we've been doing over the last few months and the discussions here, I feel much more positive than I would have ever expected to feel. And I do think that um, the Commission has the capacity to make some very concrete and politically feasible suggestions to uh, help put it back on course. So after Toronto, what next for the Warwick Commission? The Commission's director is Professor Richard Higgett. We've identified what we consider to be the six or seven key issue areas that we want to deal with. And we now have a program for going away, uh, rewriting uh, the initial draft, taking account of the, the issues that we want to deal with. Uh, over the next couple of months, we're going to be gathering evidence around these issues as well. Uh, we will be getting a complete second draft of the report uh, by the end of uh, July, early August, that will be then distributed to all the commissioners uh, who will have their opportunity to make comment, uh, suggestions, amendments uh, for when we uh, meet again in Warwick uh, in September when we would expect to have a more or less final draft. Hopefully we'll agree on our recommendations. And that brings another term of Warwick ICAST to a close. Thank you to you, the viewers, for watching and for making our first year such a success. We'll be back at the start of next term, but for now, from me, Robin Powell in Toronto, and the rest of the ICAST team, goodbye.